Hey, good morning, everybody. Jim Davis here from the Fluke Network's Technical Assistance Center. I'm excited. We got something new to talk about testing today. We're going to take a look at how we test this new, you might have heard of it as a VSFF or a very small form factor connector. There are a couple different types. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we test an MDC connector. And something really interesting, I have an MDC input on the port of our Versive Certifiber Pro, so we can set a one jumper reference, which of course will give us the least uncertainty in our measurement. Now to do that, we've got a catch. There are two connectors in here. There are two ferrules, and I've got an output port and an input port. So to overcome that, we're going to be using this Y cable. One leg will be our transmit and the other will be our receive. I want to take a moment to thank Legrand who supplied us with both the Y cables and the cables that we're going to be testing today as part of their acclaim solution. And hey, instructions for how to test a claim. All right, so now let's get our one jumper reference set. So to do that, I'll take our connector out. We're going to take off our dust cap and hey, I tell everybody they need to inspect before they connect. So let me make sure I inspect before I connect myself. I like to hold the connector and use a finger from the hand that's holding the connector to try and line this up, plug this in. I do have a fiber inspection test set. So we'll push the fiber inspection button and we'll just get that in focus. Beautiful, that's ready to go. Now we're used to LC connectors that have a horizontal orientation, but these MDC connectors have a vertical orientation. So I'm looking to see where this key is along the top edge. And I need the key to be on the right hand side because what I'm going to do is line up one of the legs with the photo detector inside of here. So there is one leg lined up and let me not get my cables confused here. Not that that would ever happen. Take off our trusty dust holding cap. Just because it has a dust holding cap doesn't mean it's clean. So let's again use a finger here, line this up, slide that on. Once you've looked at a couple of connectors, you'll understand that's clean and ready to go. Again, with the black key facing to the right hand side of the tester, that will line up the fiber. We get the happy noise. Great. So now I'm going to go to the home screen and I'm going to switch from my fiber inspection test to my fiber loss test doing smart remote of an optical loss test set, an OLTS. We'll say use selected. Now, when we're doing fiber loss testing, the first thing that we need to do is measure how much light is coming out of the fiber now. We call this setting the reference. Setting the reference is an extremely important step. If we do this wrong, our testing all day long is going to be wrong. And that's why we want to do this with the one jumper reference. Now, one of the things that I really like about the Certifiber Pro is when I go in to set reference, I have this wizard to walk me through the steps. So let's jump a couple steps in here and we'll see black boot in the power meter, red boot going to the output port. Heck, it even has yellow fiber to remind us that we're doing single mode. So we remember to plug into the single mode output and not the multi-mode. All right, and next we'll say set reference. And the nice thing about the wizard is if the reference is wrong, the tester will bark at you and say, hey, there's not enough light. If we want to, we can view the reference about minus 3 dBm. That's what we're looking for. Go back into our test. Now, next, it's going to show us to disconnect from the power meter. Now, here's a trick. When I disconnect from the power meter, let me think about where I'm going to go with the fiber. So I don't want to disconnect it and say, where's the coupler? Where's the cleaning kit? And wave it around and get a bunch of dust on it. So I'm going to put these into this coupler. I'll take this out. Now, on the coupler, I'm looking for the side that has a hole in it, as opposed to the side without a hole. And I'm going to align the side with a hole with my key that's going across the top of the connector. We'll plug that in. Now, a little bit of a tricky part. And what I'm doing is the test reference cord verification here. To pull the connector out, I need to pull it by the boot, and I need to reverse the polarity, otherwise I'll have transmit to transmit. So to reverse the polarity of the connector, just going to hold the blue part here, 
pull down on the strain relief, and I'm going to rotate the connector. And with a little bit of practice, you'll get better at sliding this in. There we go, it's locked in place. And now you can see that MDC is upside down relative to the key. Now, because this was in the power meter that isn't making physical contact, I'm not going to inspect the connector right now. Generally, these work well for me. All right, now that's plugged in. Now, we do need to plug in the other leg. Now, in the other leg, even though there seem to be two ferrules here, we're only using one of the fibers. The other fiber is on our transmit leg. So I just need to inspect the one fiber that's next to the key to make sure that that's good. Now, here is a fun enhancement in the 6.12 firmware. You'll notice now I've got a fiber inspector button. So if you forget about the secret button, and if I got to call it a secret button, <laughs> who's going to know it's there? I can inspect this in the middle. Eh, beautiful. And again, I'm going to have the black key going towards the right. I can inspect these connectors in the middle of the set reference wizard without having to jump out of the wizard. Add this to our collection of little pieces that we don't want to lose. And again, I'm just inspecting the one fiber because there's nothing on the other leg. Eh, good enough. All right. And with the key facing to the right, we'll plug this in. And because I reversed the polarity, we get the beep, the happy noise. Now, the test reference cord verification is just to check and make sure that these connectors are high quality. With the new, very low loss budgets that we have, we want to reduce the uncertainty, and the better the performance of our test reference cord connectors, the less uncertainty we're going to have in our measurement. So now, a new enhancement from the 6.12 firmware, our back button is highlighted. We want to follow the yellow brick road. <laughs> Too many wizard references here. But typically, the yellow button is the preferred choice. I'll add my known good leg here, and we'll join those together, and we'll do our test reference cord verification. Now, because this is single mode, yep, we want to get less than 0 0.25 dB of loss. We've got that. Now we're ready to take our measurement. We'll just finish up the wizard. The wizard says open it up and put our link to be tested there. All right. So, hey, I want to do things the right way. And even though I have inspected our link to be tested a couple dozen times already, we're going to inspect it again. And I'm going to do a bulkhead inspection because that's a little bit different. And to do the bulkhead inspection, I'm partial to using our FI3000 camera. The FI3000 camera has two real benefits over the single fiber FI1000. FI and the first benefit is if I am using an MPO connector or an MMC connector, this will be for the next video, the FI3000 allows me to see all 24 fibers in this MPO connector at a single time. The other thing that the FI3000 camera does really well is bulkhead inspection. I find with the single camera, it's a little bit trickier. I kind of wish I had a third hand to adjust the focus when I'm, when I'm plugging it in. So for this bulkhead inspection, I'm going to put this little tip into the bulkhead. Now remember, this would be in the rack, in our patch panel. It's not going to be in our hands. But for purposes of this demonstration, it's going to be in my hands. Now there are two holes because there are two fibers. And what we're going to do is first remember to turn the camera on. And then we'll slide the tip of the camera into the first of the holes. Now the camera will also work better if it's plugged in. Yeah, you'll forget this, but then you'll realize. And I'm going to change from my loss test to a fiber inspection test. Use selected push test to start. Now, at first, we're going to see it showing up just as this little tiny dot. That's okay, because remember, this camera is expecting to see a row of 12 fibers. So we'll say analyze, and instead of getting that low resolution image, we'll get a high resolution image that'll show the whole connector end face. Beautiful. And then, of course, we'll switch over and test the other connector, because there are two, 
to make sure that both of them are in good shape. Now, I'm not going to save these, these images, and that's just a choice. Do I need to save the images or not? It depends on, it passed, that's nice. It depends a little bit on your contract. Does your customer want you to save all those end faces? And I kind of think, you know, gee, a passing end face, that's, um, that's not the most exciting thing. But think about it. What's going to be done with your link after you leave? And if someone's going to come along in a week, a month, a year to plug in some active equipment, you might want to save that end face image so that when the next person who comes along to, plugs, to plug in, if they screw something up, and how are they going to screw it up? They're going to plug in a dirty patch cord. If you've saved the end face image, you have documentation to say, hey, when I left, this was in good shape. And it's not that you won't have to come back. It's just that you won't have to pay for the return trip. All right. So now that we know that our connector is in good shape and for the sake of this video, work with me on this. I have a reverse polarity. I have a flip in the link to be tested. So I'm not going to change the polarity back of this connector. I am going to make sure that the key is lined up with the hole along the top. And I'm going to make sure that the key is lined up with the hole on the top of the coupler on the far end. And we'll plug that in. Got the happy noise. That's a good sign. That means we're lined up the right way. Now, let me go back to home and I'm going to go back to doing our loss test with the smart remote. You selected. Now I'm doing the ref version. The difference between ref and standard is reference grade knows that we're using connectors with better than 0.25 dB of loss. So it's only going to give us 0.5 dB of loss for the first and last connector. When we think about the high speed applications, this is a better way to go. All right, and we'll push test to start. Three seconds, two wavelengths, we passed. That is a one jumper reference setting and testing of the new very small form factor MDC connector. Thank you for watching.